بعيدا كن فريدا عش بفخر في الحياة لا تبالي فالمعالي بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is your brother Bona Muhammad coming at you with another episode of Hangout where we hang out and we have with us another great guest Sheikh Wasim Kempson who comes from the UK He's with us here today Salaam alaikum Sheikh Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah How's everything? I'm good brother Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Zakallah khair Thank you very much for joining us on this episode um, I've, You know I've been watching the news recently and uh, unfortunately or fortunately Islam is constantly in the headlines You know mm -hmm. we're always hearing about Muslims doing something crazy over here or some attack or something that's happened that somehow revolves around a negative image of Islam uh, and it feels like there isn't really a voice for mainstream Islam. You know, you have the very right wing, you know, maybe conservative extremist Muslims on one wing who are putting out, you know, anti uh, anti West propaganda that looks bad on us. And then you have on the other side the Western, you know, state governments that are also have their own agenda against Islam. But it seems like the people in the middle, you know, Ummatul Wasat, yeah. us, we don't have a voice. Sure. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ba'd. It's a good analysis from yourself, and you're right. Not a day passes except that you find Muslims are in the news and more often than not it's for the wrong reasons. Mm. And added to that, if you like, that it is the actions of, of a very few or a minority which uh, reach the news and then has an impact on upon everybody else. So media outlets, they're there to find news. They're there to tell everybody what's happening. Now the vast majority of Muslims aren't doing very much, if you like. Now you find a small amount, they are doing something a bit wrong, so that is what is being put in, in the news and having that negative impact on us. So I think practically, as Muslims, uh, for the majority I'm talking about, and finding that middle path, as opposed to being that extreme conservative or the extreme liberal side, right. let's find that middle path. Mm. And this middle path is, is, is mentioned a lot. You know, what is this middle path, this moderate path? Right. Uh, it has its own definitions, it has its own understandings. So really, how do we define what is this moderate and this So what does path? it mean? People say this term, being a moderate Muslim. You mm. know, you always hear the news and the media saying, you know, where are the moderate Muslims? Yeah. And sometimes people get offended when you say moderate. Yeah. You know, because it has a weird kind of connotation to it, a very liberal, progressive connotation. What, what does that mean, being moderate or being in the middle? You mentioned earlier, and, and you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this an ummah and wasata. I made this an ummah, a nation of the middle path. Now that's translated uh, in, into many, many things, i.e. that we don't go from one extreme to the next, whether it's extreme conservative, or not necessarily whether conservatism, extremism, in whatever form it comes in, whether it is overzealousness, or there's complete relaxation and complete compromise on the other. Mm. So where do we really find ourselves in this, this middle path? Now, uh, just a few days ago, looking at different media outlets in myself, there are those who are not Muslims, and they're talking about really the events that have been going on over the past few days. This doesn't have to be, you know, time relevant, what month I'm talking about, or what year. I can be talking about any month or any year. Right. There's an event that's happened concerning the Muslims. Yeah. So really what we're saying is, uh, to some extent, timeless. Because right, right. it's relevant all the time. Right. Uh, you find you know, people who are not Muslims talking about events, really what's happening, and they say, well, this has a negative impact on the moderate Muslim. Mm. The moderate Muslim here, well, this is the moderate Muslim, maybe in their view is the liberal Muslim, who's willing just to compromise on everything and anything that maybe a lot of people, they don't understand and therefore don't like, are willing just to put to one side. Mm. This is one understanding of moderation or a moderate Muslim, right. which I myself may not agree with, and mm. maybe many Muslims wouldn't agree with. Right. You know, why is it other people have to give us terms or give us understandings what a moderate Muslim is? I mm. think you know these terms can be really utilized in so many different ways, used and abused. Mm. So as Muslims, we have to define ourselves really what it is to be a Muslim. Right. And adding terms like moderate Muslim, liberal Muslim, all of these terms just create more confusion. You know, Allah Azza wa Jalla Sammana Muslimun. Mm. He named us Muslimin, those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. And if we just go back to, you know, teachings that were given to us fundamentally, that what made, you know, earlier our, our early generations successful. Mm. These are the kind of things that we need to really adhere to. And then we can really take control of the narrative to say, this is what the Muslim is. Mm. And, you know, essentially it means being a positive and benefit to society at large. Right. So how do you feel as though, I mean, being Muslims in the West, uh, we can adversely change our society and make it so that, you know, the uh, idea about Islam or Muslims is not always negative. Uh, I, I know that there, you know, 
some people out there have different agendas or views as, as to how to make you know, Islam um, comfortable with the West or how to make West, the, the West comfortable with Islam. But what are some are tips or advice that you sure. could give that can really kind of give us an idea of how we can make Islam you know, something that's comfortable on the ears of, of sure. non-Muslims in the West? You know, uh, Islam is, is not something new. It is something that all people who adhere to, if you can, if you can say the Abrahamic religions, mm. Islam is not very far from them, that moral code that exists within all of us, whether Jews or Christians, we have right. many things in common. And you find that, especially with certain communities, that they wanted to positively, to positively influence their society, their communities, that they were proactive in wanting to be part of the community to give them what they believed was a benefit. Mm -hmm. Instead of just sitting back and really isolating yourself and allowing the community then to influence you, because, you know, in terms of molding and influence, influencing, it's going one of two ways. Either you are being molded or you're being influenced, or it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. You're trying to mold and you're trying to influence people in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And I think for too long that Muslims, if you like, in, in many Western communities, we've just, you know, just sat back and allowed that what's around us, because life's fairly comfortable. Right. And we can become a little bit absent-minded about really what we have. We've just sat there and allowed whatever's going on to for it to mold us mm. and therefore this has led to the American Muslim this is the British Muslim and this is the Canadian Muslim and this is the French Muslim mm. because and we've become so different from each other mm. because we've allowed those societies <laughs> to have such an impact on us that we have become so different mm. therefore if we look at it very differently that let us all wherever we come from we can be quite similar right but we need to be proactive and allow our Islam to not only have an influence over us, but also those around us, mm. so we can start reversing the way things are going. Mm. I think this would be a good step. That's interesting, actually, you mentioned that. I know that uh, I've traveled to the UK many times, and uh, one thing I notice about you know, British culture in general is that it is a little bit standoffish. You know, sure. British people in general, they like their space. You, yes. know, you don't see many people smiling on, on the tube when you're just you know, going on, <laughs> true, on your yeah. own business, right? That's right. Uh, and in, 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 in some parts in the US, it's the complete opposite, where yeah. people are very, you know, jolly and they yeah. want to talk to you and they want to get in your business sure. and sometimes you find that the Muslims take on those characteristics mm -hmm. do you find that to be the case definitely I think it's again is a good observation that uh, see there's not a problem you know different people uh, they have different traits you know if, if for example you mentioned in America for example people are a little more open a little more uh, accepting of, of you know people's different approaches and yeah the English way or the British way is a little bit more cold a little more you know stiff upper lip as it were and you know mm. I need my space you know don't be coming close to me and things mm. that's okay to an extent that w we are different Th right. that's fine but what I'm saying is that you know these the environment that you have yeah you can be different in your own little way mm. but there is a there's a, an, an underlying and fundamental kind of uh, influence that we have is, is our Islam mm. which things like you know okay smile be generous be kind uh, be sharing, be interactive, don't isolate yourselves. This is something that we can all have. Mm. It's good that we're all different. Right. You know, Allah has created us in different colors, with different languages, different attitudes, different ways. That's good. That's what enriches humanity, if you like. Mm. But we should have something in common. And that is, you know, us, our, our understanding of our Islam in, in the way that it was given to those people whom that we know were the first to receive it right. and were able to to really have such a positive influence over their society at that time. Mm. What about the notion that a lot of people have that, for instance, as Muslims living in Western countries, uh, they know that we shouldn't uh, be adopting Western practices and that we should really be shunning kind of everything the West has to offer. Sure. And people feel like, you know, they want to become like hermits and, mm. and live in their, you know, little caves and go to their masjid that, you know, everyone sounds like them and speaks like them and talks like them. Mm. How do we break out of that mold that I think a lot of traditionally, you know, you know, traditionally culturally Muslim groups have kind yeah. of adopted? Yeah. I would begin by saying that the Prophet wasallam showed us a beautiful guidance on these matters like this. That there would be many different types of people who would visit him. And when he was aware that a particular tribe who wore a particular type of clothing or who be behaved in a particular way, or who spoke in a particular way, he والسلام, would want some knowledge of that. Mm. So that when he addressed them and he spoke to them, that there would be some things that they could have thing, a common, some common terms between each other. Right. So it's not, this is who I am, this is what I stand for, and everything that you have, I mean, I'm not interested in it, and it's all wrong, and this is our culture, and we, and we need to stay like this. Mm. The Prophet وسلم, showed us that we need to sometimes adapt ourselves. Right. And understanding to say that, everything that the West 
has, we should shun it, we should turn away from it. This is, this is completely wrong. Right. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the whole world and all people inside that world. We don't all have to try and be Arabs because mm. we're not. Mm. You know, we can be Australian Muslims and have our Muslim identity and anything because culture or customs, if you like, play mm -hmm. a very important part in, uh, in Islam. Right. And it has almost, uh, well, it does not almost, it does have a place in, in Islamic law. Mm. That we can establish rulings concerning customs if we don't have specific texts on that. So there are many things which in Western countries that are of great benefit and we can benefit greatly from as Muslims. Mm. This is not to say that there are, you know, we don't have this in Islam. We have this in Islam. Things like organization, administration, you know, doing things on time. You know, <laughs> this is not known to the Muslim world. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've, we've yeah. lost this. Yeah. You know, and, and the West have, uh, in general, have, have taken this to a, to a good level, to an mm. acceptable level, with something which makes them successful in what they do. Mm -hmm. Why is it that as Muslims, we've, you know, we want to shun everything in the West? Okay, you want to shun being on time? Mm. You want to shun... Uh, you know, professionalism, uh, professionalism and, and right. administration, doing things properly. Why right. would you want to shun such a thing? Right. You know, there, there's time and there's Muslim time. Mm. You know, we shouldn't have things like that. Right. We should adopt things which will benefit us and bring us, you know, uh, as to be positive members of society. Take these things on. Mm. Of course, anything which goes against our religion, mm. yeah, we shun it. We take, you know, we don't take from it. Mm. But things which will benefit, for sure, take it. Okay, that's. I mean, that's a really interesting point. I, I you know, thinking about the the cultures and communities that we come from, oftentimes. Um, like I said, you know, Muslims live in their own little nooks and, and, and they don't really integrate with the communities around them. But on the flip side, what are the rights of the people around us? Mm -hmm. You know, many of us, a lot of people who will be watching this live in non-Muslim countries or countries mm -hmm. that are majority non-Muslim. Um, and we often don't think about our neighbors, non-Muslim neighbors, as being people that, you know, we have to have certain rights towards. Yeah. What are those rights that our neighbors have on us non-Muslims uh, living in the countries that we do? Well. Uh, I mentioned a beautiful hadith. Uh, the, the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Jibreel, uh, the angel Jibreel, he came to me and used to advise me about the rights of the neighbor until I thought that the neighbor would inherit from me. Allah Akbar. Yeah, so the, the right of the neighbor, and I mentioned neighbor, it didn't distinguish between Muslims, non-Muslims. It mentioned al-jar, the neighbor. Mm. So the right of the neighbor and what you do for them is something very, very great and important in Islam. Mm. Now, no doubt the, doubt the, the, the rights that are due from one to the next are, are different. If they're Muslim, right, you know, Muslim neighbors, they have the rights of a Muslim and so on and so forth, right. or the rights of a family member. But if it is a non-Muslim, they have the right of a jar, the right of a neighbor not to harm them, mm. not to cause them any disturbance, to be kind and generous to them. You know, as Muslims, we have a great responsibility of, of delivering the message of Islam. And right. this is what the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did while in Medina. There were you know, Jewish communities there, other communities there, and they were aware and they saw the beautiful manner that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam, had in dealing with all people, mm. non-Muslims and Muslims alike. Mm. So it's very important for us that you know, if we believe that and we know that Islam is a universal religion, it's not something we, need, we should try to keep and hide from people. Right. So if they're non-Muslims, they have a right over us mm. for us to be kind and generous to them to deliver the message of Islam in any way possible. It doesn't mean that you need to start knocking on the door, here's the Quran, you need to accept Islam. Right. No, this is, you know, you have to be wise in how you deal with things. Right. By your actions at times, they may say, well, I've not had a neighbor like you before. Mm. So they may start asking questions about Islam. Mm. So no doubt the rights of neighbors is something which, unfortunately, many Muslims that were unaware of and we fall short. So, right. you know, this is something we need to work on. You know, it's he, he, okay, here's an interesting scenario for you, okay? <laughs> I have a neighbor, uh, I won't say they're, hopefully they're not watching, or <laughs> <laughs> they are watching, forgive me. Okay, I have a neighbor who I don't really get along with okay. that well. I mean, sure. I, we don't, we don't, we're not on the best of terms, you know, sure. they're, um, sometimes they play music too loud, yeah. you know, they're outside smoking on the porch, and, and it causes disturbance in my life. I, I you know, I, I don't like that type sure. of behavior happening in front of my kids on my street. Yeah. And I, sometimes I feel like, um, you know, I want to give them da'wah and I want to speak to them about Islam and I want to make that, you know, friendship, that's something that will benefit them specifically. But I also feel like I want to, you know, sometimes I want to report them to the police and tell them, you know, these guys are making disturbance in my community. But yeah. I also feel like if I did that, maybe they would be less inclined to hear what I had to say about Islam. Sure. Um, how do we balance this idea? Like, I, this is a very random scenario, yeah, yeah, yeah. mine specifically. Sure. But and how do we deal with neighbors or people around us that we feel are a nuisance, that we feel like are maybe they're alcoholics, maybe they're people that genuinely we feel like they bring bad upon the society yeah, we live in. Yeah. How do we deal with them in that yeah. state, in that circumstance? You know, the, the bottom line is that 
if they happen to be your neighbor, you know, we're, we're living together. Mm. And if I'm not planning to move, i.e. that for the foreseeable future, we're here together. So yes, they may do things which uh, I don't like. So does that mean I'm going to, if I do call the police or call the authorities, that may make the situation worse. Mm. So you need to be wise in how you deal with the situation. So what I would say is that as a Muslim, we need to, within ourselves, realize that I would like to, as much as possible, deliver the message of Islam so that everybody's saved from, from punishment in the hereafter. Mm. How can I deliver that message to that neighbor? I could quite easily go outside and say, please, you know, don't smoke outside my, uh, my house. This is, my children are seeing this. Uh, this is causing great disturbance and, and I don't like where, you, where you're behaving, I don't like the fact that you're playing music. It's like, oh, you want me to suddenly just, you want to control my life? Is mm. Of course, they're not going to accept this. And there's a thousand and one things that you could do. I mean, if you know that person in particular, I don't know. It could be the case that it, if they're smoking outside, I mean, it's not the greatest, it's not a big crime. I mean, maybe the person's doing that. Maybe, I don't know, one day you say, you know, you make yourself a cup of tea. Mm. And you go outside, it might, it might be a nice day make them a cup of tea and say, you know, there's a cup of tea. Mm. Or something that you may know that, is, or give them a, you know, a fizzy drink or a cool drink or something, right. just to break the ice between them. And then, you know, <laughs> somehow that you get conversing about something and, you know, and it, I think it starts from there. How that develops, of course, who knows that's going to develop. But that's, the, the, you know, the responsibility on, on the Muslim to, to have that positive influence and try to take things in, in a positive way. Mm. It's easy to have enmity and keep that there and not do anything. Right. But we should always strive and struggle to, to improve the situation to the best that we can. You know? Okay, here's another scenario for you. Say, mm. for instance, somebody has, uh, like I have a female neighbor, mm. okay, you know, a woman maybe who lives on her own, say, for example. And, uh, you know, I want to give dawah and I want to be a good example, but, uh, you know, maybe she invites me over, mm. you know, me by myself sure. to, to have some tea or something, sure. right? And I think to myself, okay, you know, I don't want to be rude, mm. but I also don't want to put myself in a situation that, you know, obviously, Islamically, I would not be very happy about. Mm. Um, to what extent can I, you know, help the community, help the people around me without at the same time compromising my Islamic values? Sure, sure. I think uh, subconsciously I'm uh, influencing, influencing your questions <laughs> because you're, you're mentioning tea. I don't know how much tea, tea you, <laughs> I don't know how much tea you drink in Canada, you know? <laughs> We're learning from the Brits slowly, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it doesn't have to be tea, right? It could be right. anything, right? Anything, okay. okay. Coffee, no. say for instance. All right, coffee is okay. I think uh, if that is the case, I mean, if, if your neighbor invites you, and I think it's just, just you know, a female inviting you to do something where it's a little bit uncomfortable for you to, to, to get out of that. Sometimes mm. the shaking of the hands. Right. You know, these kind of things, you, ne you need to be uh, prepared. Mm. How are you going to deal with that situation or how you're going to, uh, you know, give an answer. Right. Um, of course, you don't want the, the point is you don't want to offend that person. And you don't want to leave something, you know, leaves a bad feeling in their mind about, you know, I was really trying to be kind to them and they just, you know, they turned away from me and it can, you know, take a long time to, you know, recover that situation. I think that if, you've, if you're suddenly invited to the next door neighbor, say, you know, that, that's a great idea. Uh, I'd love to come over. Uh, and, you know, likewise, I'd like you to invite <coughs> you over. And uh, if you have a sister or you have a wife to ensure that, you know, that they would be there, mm. but somehow delay it, if you like, if that's how you feel. Right. So, you know, okay, um, I, I think it's a great idea. I'd love to, you know, have a cup of uh, coffee with you or mm. something like this. However, at the time, it's a little bit busy at the moment. Can we rearrange, m mention a date? Right. I think that's very important. Don't just say, oh, we'll put it to another time. Right. Don't just say, you know, you're just brushing me off. Yeah. I can't do it today. What about tomorrow? Mm. Or the next time you're free? Let me know when you're free again, please, mm. when you can do that. And then you've got time to arrange with yourself. You know, your sister. So you got to be mother. strategic. You got to think about it. You have to be it. clever. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to, you know, move on your toes. I you mentioned know? that because I know a lot of Muslims sometimes fall into the trap of saying like, well, it's for the sake of da'wah, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, they want me to go to a party or they want me to do something. And it's like, oh, it's all fisi bili la, yeah. right? Uh, is there ever a time when the ends justify the means? When it's like, okay, let me just break this rule mm. because there's a greater good at stake. Yeah. You know, I think... Uh, the greater good that the person is talking about is, is never guaranteed. You know, the fact if I was to do something which is contrary to Islamic practice by going to a party or going to a place where it's, you know, or alcohol. with your co-workers, you know, exactly, going yeah, out to a bar after know, work yeah, or something yeah. like that. You know, uh, a good intention is very important. I agree with you. But yeah. the good intention does not change the reality of that, if what we call is haram, haram. Mm. Haram is haram. Your intention can't make something haram into a halal. Right. Even though the objective is something which is good, 
it doesn't mean that I need to go through the haram to, to, you know, to perform that good deed. Right. We have to be clever. If I want to do something like this, I, okay, that's the end goal. That's what I would like to do, deliver the message and give the hour some way. Mm. Is there a permissible means of way of doing that? Mm. Or have I not thought about it? I'm just simply going to go this way. Mm. People, this is what they do usually, to, you know, to justify themselves, to, to deliver the message of Islam. I'm just going to do this. Mm. Okay, have you, have you ever thought about you can do it some, in, in some other way? Right. I mean, going to a party, you know, people can listen to music. People listening to, you know, um, to all types of things and engaging in all types. I don't know how you're going to you know, somehow deliver that message of Islam in such an environment. Right. It would be extremely difficult. And the shaitan will, will somehow justify that to you and say, mm. yeah, there's, there's a possibility and maybe you'll meet you know, some, uh, um, per another person there mm. who is you know, looking for a purpose in life and then you may meet them there and then the, you know, they may become Muslim and may, you know, maybe you can marry them one day. You know? <laughs> the shaitan puts all kinds of things yeah. in, in your mind. You know? So never put yourself in a compromising position. Never put yourself in a dangerous position. There's always another way. If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to make things easy for you, to facilitate for you, you have a good intention, always seek a permissible way. And then inshallah ta'ala, Allah Azza wa will open a way for you to do things correctly. Mm. Uh, okay, here's another scenario. I have a lot mm. of scenarios, okay? Uh, <laughs> I was in Brazil yeah. for the World Cup, yeah. okay? Some of you may have seen that, you know, I was, I was there with, with Y-Islam and we were doing da'wah there. And, um, you know, there's a lot of women out. Sure. You know, especially like that time, you know, summertime, it's very warm outside. Sure. Yeah. And a lot of brothers, we do this, you know, you have your dawah table, you set up your dawah stall. Mm. But there can be a lot of fitna as well <laughs> that you're being exposed to. And at the same time, you think to yourself, okay, I'm here to give dawah. Mm. I have a good intention. I know what's inside of me. But at the same time, there are perhaps vices around, things around me that I know I'm weak. And yeah. I know I can't control myself. I know that it's difficult for me. Sure. In that sense, in that in that circumstance specifically, yeah. would you still advise that brother to go out and give dawah or be on that dawah table if he knows he's going to be seeing things that perhaps sure. he shouldn't be? Yeah, I agree. Okay, what I believe is that there are there are certain events, there are certain seasons where definitely a Muslim can take advantage of something like the World Cup, okay, which comes once every four years, okay, and you have thousands, hundreds of thousands of people from all around the world at one place at one time. Or the Olympics. Right. This is another opportunity. We had in this, London a couple we years had back this, as well. you know, I think it was in 2012, we yep. had the London yep. Olympics. Yep. And we had a number of brothers and organizations, you know, uh, using that as a season to spread Islam. Mm. We had the Commonwealth Games. I, the point being that there are certain occasions where this is a, an excellent opportunity for the Muslim to deliver the true message of Islam to a number of people, whereas they would never ever have that chance to do that. Mm. This is point number one. So take advantage of that. Okay. Number two, okay, who are we going to choose and who is going to be part of delivering that message? Mm. It is very important that the person or those people who are involved are number one suitable to deliver the message okay. in the correct way and that they themselves are sufficiently prepared to best they can not be affected by uh, the situation that they're going into. Mm. So if a person is, is, is you know, let's just be honest, if a person is weak with, with, with the other gender, okay, he's a brother and he feels he can be tempted easily, mm. I would say, you know what, it's a great opportunity to give da'wah. However, because, and this may be a personal thing that he discusses and he should, you know, consult. Mm. I would say, you, is better for not you, better for you not to go. But, but he'll feel shy, like he wants to go. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, that's fair enough. Maybe he doesn't want to ask another person. So let them have a judgment on themselves if right. in anything actually, not just you know, giving da'wah. If you feel yourself weak in a particular thing, stay away from it. You know? Even if there's khair in it? Well, the thing is that what you could fall into is far greater. Never expose yourself to any danger. Mm. Yeah, there may be good in it, right. but the danger that you expose yourself to is, you know, is very great. Don't, don't do that. Right. You so know, it's better to protect yourself. In there's, that a, there's an Islamic principle, and that is that the protection or the pushing away of harm will take precedence over bringing some good. So, okay. okay? Mm. So uh, this is a very important principle in, in Islamic law that removing any harm will take precedence about bringing any good. So a situa situation like this, yes, there's some good, but there's a great possibility of some harm. Mm. So if this being the case, therefore I will put that first and I won't get involved in that. Right. So taking advantage of these situations is very important, but as important is choosing the correct people to get themselves involved in that so that the message is delivered correctly and that no harm comes, you know, comes to those brothers who are involved in that. Mm. Mm. Lastly, I think um, just going back to the idea of community building and, and you know, being uh, of the middle nation, being of the people that, you know, I don't want to say moderate, but sure. the middle people, I think sure. is probably the best term to use. Mm -hmm. um, 
a lot of times we find ourselves, you know, with we have common issues that our communities around us can rally around. Perhaps there's the issue of, you know, um, maybe it's like pornographic images yes. on advertising billboards in our communities, in our school areas. Uh, perhaps there are issues around um, drinking and driving, you know, issues yeah. that Muslims, yes, we feel passionate about, but we mm. also feel like the people who are championing those issues, mm. we don't agree with them fundamentally. Yep. To what extent can we work with these different groups or these different communities yeah. to work for a good and common cause um, that Muslims and non-Muslims can also agree to? Yeah. You know, sometimes as Muslims we have the attitude that uh, we are the only ones who can ever stand for anything that can be considered ma'ruf, that is good. That's not the case. Yes, we understand that what is good and that what's wrong. However, you may find communities, you know, uh, organizations and, and people supporting um, you know morals that we stand for as Muslims right you know things like you know pornography uh, you know uh, consumption of alcohol you know it being sold very cheap mm. it being available at 24 hours there, there's a number of people not Muslims right that they're against such things mm. that they have you know lobbying groups you know lobbying the government lo lobbying the members of parliament say you know we, we want to control how these things are you know being distributed in our community I think mm. it's very important for Muslims to because uh, we are part of that community to, to liaise with these people and to work for a common good right. and I think this will also a, uh, aid and help our, our credibility as, as Muslims that we're not just kind of people who isolate ourselves mm. we are active and positive members of our community who want to bring about the, the, you know, a general good and a universal good for everybody right. so it's very important for, you know, for Muslims to get involved in in uh, you know in lobbying such uh, things which we don't agree with with other organizations even though they be you know they may be non-muslim mm -hmm. i don't see any problem in that wallahu alam jazakallah khair sheikh we really appreciate you taking the time and speaking with us and we benefited from your wisdom Allah greatly jazakallah khair for joining us and jazakallah khair for everybody watching this another episode of hangout make sure you check out the hashtag hangout show and get involved in the discussion let us know what you think about the topics we discussed throughout this episode inshallah we'll see you again next episode this is your brother bono muhammad signing off jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh كن فريدا عش بفخر في الحياة لا تبالي فالمعالي